Butler. Thank you, Madam Deputy Speaker. Madam Deputy Speaker, during the last 18 months, it has been a tale of the good, the bad and the ugly. The good in that the people of Bren and elsewhere have joined together to form mutual aid groups, religions have come together, found common ground, and strangers are now firm friends. The bad in this government's catastrophic handling of the pandemic, the mixed messages, corruption in plain sight, and the authoritarian laws and erosion of our democracy, and the ugly. Racism has reared its ugly head in society, spurred on by government reports and the hyping up of the culture war and the war on woke. And whilst the NHS was coping with 130,000 people dying from the pandemic, the Prime Minister was making his mates rich. Cronyism is rife. Old chums are given jobs regardless of their skill set and some a little bit on the side. This has been one big experiment for this corrupt, authoritarian, racist and neighbouring government. And I'm not scared, Madam Deputy Speaker, of saying it like it is. The government said we need to talk about class, so let's do it. Let's call it out. This toxic elitism once and for all. Highlight Byline Times, Good Law Project, Navarra Media, Open Democracy, Amnesty, Liberty, all exposing the government, and the government's response is to spend public money defending the indispensable. Funny how there's no money for the NHS staff, but £1 billion of COVID contracts have been awarded to Conservative donors. Ministers were not involved, we were told, but then uh, Good Law Project exposed emails from the Prime Minister's advisers and the Home Secretary lobbying for money. This corrupt authoritarian approach of the government would be condemned and investigated if it was happening anywhere else in the world. Yeah, yeah. The 1% believe they owe nothing to society. They don't believe in the NHS because they don't, they don't support it. But this week, I spoke to oral youth uh, writer Manuel Nadim. She wrote, let anti-racism be both common logic and law. May we have more accountability than apologies. May performative placeholders post be followed by policy. When the future arrives, let the minimum wage be the living wage. Let survival be birthright. And when the poor cannot pay with anything else, let us not ask them to pay with their lives. Madam Deputy Speaker, poor people in our country have paid with their lives because the Prime Minister spent the last 18 months misleading this House and the country. Peter Stefanik from the CWU has over 27 million views on his online. And let me tell you some of them. He highlights that the Prime Minister said the economy has grown by 73%. It's just not true. Reinstated nurses bursary, just not true. There wasn't an app working anywhere in the world, just isn't true. Tories invested 34 billion in the NHS, not true. The Prime Minister said we have severed the link between infection and serious disease and death. Not only is this not true, Madam Deputy Speaker, but it is dangerous, and it's dangerous to line the pandemic. And I'm disappointed that the Prime Minister has not come to the House to correct the record and to correct the fact that he has lied to this House and the country over and over again. Order. I'm, I'm sure that the, um, the member will um, reflect on um, her words just then, perhaps correct the record. Madam Deputy Speaker, what would you rather, a weakened leg or a severed leg? You know, at the end of the day, the Prime Minister has lied to this House time and time again. And it's funny that we get in trouble in this place for calling out the lie rather than the person lying. Order, order, order. Order. Can you re please, please reflect on your words and withdraw your remarks? Deputy Speaker, I've reflected on my words and somebody needs to tell the truth in this House that the Prime Minister has lied. Under the power given me by Standing Order number 43, I order the member to withdraw immediately from the House for the remainder of the day.